Okay, so let's get to this creating this loop simulation. So the idea of creating a loop simulation or animation is quite simple. So what you're going to do is to, instead of uh, starting from the frame zero, you're going to start from somewhere in the middle. For example, let's say uh, frame 50, something like that. And you're going to grab this part. Let me grab it from here and just put it at the end of the animation. And now you have uh, about 50 frames to blend between what is playing at, at, at these original frames and into the start frame, which is this one. So we're going to just blend from here to reach to this frame, which is the start frame. So let's uh, just test it on a simulation so you understand it better. So here I have a simulation like this. It goes for 200 frames. And the first thing we need to do is to cache the simulation. So let's cache it. Now in Maya, for pretty much everything, you can use multiple caches and blend between them. And that is how uh, we are going to achieve this effect. So with this cache uh, already attached, I'm going to attach another one, attach cache, and just assign it. And now we can see that we have two over here. And using the cache blend node, we can switch between these two caches. Now for the second cache, I'm going to uh, just move it forward. So I want it to start from somewhere around uh, 150. So I'm going to set the start frame to 150. And now from here, uh, this cache is going to start playing. And now what we're going to do is just uh, disable and enable these caches to switch between them. So at 150, I'm going to uh, set this one to zero, this one to one. So uh, up until this frame, uh, it is going to only read from uh, cache one. And from here to the end, I'm going to set this to zero and set this one to one. So it is going to blend between these two. See, from here, it starts playing uh, this frame. So let's just move this forward as well. And now if I hit play, It is going to uh, be pretty much a loop simulation. Maybe if we lower one frame, it is going to look better. Like this. So this can uh, keep playing. And if we even start to uh, go a little bit further into the uh, simulation, it can look even better. So uh, let's just go back, remove these caches both of them, and just set it to 400. And let's cache the simulation. And done. Now we're going to do the same thing again, just to reattach the cache. So we have two of them. For this one, I'm going to, this time I'm going to uh, set frame 100 as the start frame. Uh, I'm going to move uh, this cache a little bit further so it starts uh, from uh, 300 maybe. Start frame to 300. And now we are going to set a keyframe for this one. Uh, the 50 frame uh, blending is pretty much enough for me. So let's just set a keyframe here. Now oh, actually let's Set the end one first, so at the end, this cache should be enabled and this one disabled. And here it should be the opposite. So this one should be enabled and this one disabled. So yeah, now let's lower one frame and hit play. Yeah, just like that, we have a loop simulation. And we can do the same thing for pretty much everything. So I can do uh, this same uh, technique, apply the same technique on, let's say a clot simulation. So let's say we have something like this and we can use the same technique on this one as well. So I'm going to do a cache 
and then reapply it. All right, and now we need to switch between these two over the frames. Mm -hmm. So let's say at frame 100, uh, 200 it is going to be like this, and 150 it is going to be the opposite. And this one I'm going to just move it a little bit forward. So let's uh, just set the start frame to 50 and give it a try. And just like that, we have a loop cloud simulation. All right. Okay. And same thing for the particle or uh, other parts. Okay, so let's get to bright frost. Uh, of course, we need a cache first, so I already cached my simulation. And I'm going to load it using the read OpenVDB volume. Uh, and the reason I use this instead of file cache is because of this frame attribute that we have. Because we need to move the frame forward and it is easier to do this with this uh, node so uh, when you first load the cache into this node it is going to be something like this so make sure to uh, change these numbers to the number sign and with that if you change the frame you're going to see the simulation playing and to connect this to this timeline I'm going to use the time node so it is going to read the time and if I want to connect a frame from the time to uh, the read open VDB volume it is not going to work because this one is float and this one is an integer so first let's convert it to int like this and now the simulation is playing for the second cache we're going to do the same thing but uh, the cache is uh, supposed to start uh, maybe frame 200 or even earlier so I'm going to uh, do the same thing but I'm going to subtract it and let's create a value maybe by 150 okay so around here it is going to start playing and the reason I use the subtract is because uh, it is going to subtract this number from the frames so it is going to be negative value all the way to frame 150 and from here it is going to just enter frame 0 and start playing from the beginning of the cache all right and with that uh, we are mostly done now uh, what we need to do is blend between these two cache files uh, there are two methods that we can do uh, one method would be to just use uh, something like a set property or remap let's use remap property and we also have a remap uh, fact density if you just want to use with fact density but if you want to control other uh, properties as well we can just use remap property and use it with temperature and other things as well so for the property we're going to use uh, voxel frog density let's connect this one and we need to create a value for the max and we're going to do the same thing for this one I'm going to use another value like this and let's set this value to 1 and it is going to be exactly the same way so this value uh, is going to be uh, 1 up until to uh, maybe 150 or um, 200 let's say I started by just blend it between uh, 50 frames so up until this point this one is going to be 1 and this one 0 uh, from frame 200 uh, all the way to 250 they're going to just uh, switch between them by setting this one to 0 and this one to 1 and uh, you can set a keyframe in the Bifrost uh, graph so to be able to set a keyframe for them I'm going to use the input node and just connect them here so we're not going to use this value and instead we're going to create an attribute for them in the bifrost graph so let's rename this to cache one and let's rename this one to cache two and now if we take a look at bifrost graph we now have this one 
and this other one and if you uh, started uh, changing them and you see that they are not working just disconnect it and reconnect it back and that is going to make them work so yeah just like that now let's go to frame 200 set this one to one and this one to zero and 250 this one is going to be zero and this one is going to be one and now if we hit play it is going to be a loop simulation and just like that uh, there is also another method if you don't want to use the remap property and you want an easier way to control both uh, fog density and temperature and all of that you can just assign two different materials to these cache files so you can use assign material And same for this one. Standard volume material. And here we are going to just use the density, for example, for these uh, parameters. And they already have a, a keyframe. So if I just hit play, it is going to work. And right uh, around here where we do the blending, you may see some flicker happen over here. This is because of the uh, depth sorting of the viewport. Uh, if you don't want to see that, we can just use Arnold. So let's pause the viewport, hit play in Arnold. Um, let's just hit play. And this is the test of a flame result. It is way easier than uh, using the remap property. Yeah, just like that. And uh, unlike what uh, many people may think, uh, Arnold is actually quite fast in rendering this stuff. Uh, so right now I have other tasks going on on my PC as well. So if, if you have a powerful CPU and or GPU and you don't have any background processing you can just use Arnold render as the viewport for your effect all right and now and with that uh, I think I covered most of the things about looping the simulation in Maya